Jonathan, earlier this week, Anglo-American announced measures to cut its debt and its shares fell a tenth. Today, Glencore has announced measures to cut its debt and its shares have risen by the same amount. What on earth is going on? Well, I think, first of all, there are some technical factors at play. Um, Glencore's free float is smaller as a proportion of its uh, uh, market capitalization than Anglo's. Uh, also, Glencore shares have been heavily sold short. But that aside, I think this is all about perception. So uh, if you go back, say, about six months, I think a lot of investors thought that Glencore's managers had their heads in the sand a little bit. They didn't get why the market was so concerned about their debt levels and their leverage. Uh, and then they kept going on about these readily marketable inventories, uh, stocks of metals and grains and so on that they could liquidate in a hurry. Uh, and there was a sense that they were in denial uh, about the debt levels. At the start of September, Glencore came out and said, right, we're going to cut the dividend, we're going to do an equity fundraising, and we're going to cut debt and cut it more and cut costs. And so they sort of started to get on the front foot there. Anglo was slower off the mark. So this week, Anglo said, we will cut our dividend, we will sell some assets, get rid of lots of things that aren't generating cash. But they were a bit slower off the mark. And crucially, Anglo did not announce an equity fundraising either. So there's a lingering fear that that's the next thing to come. Glencore has got all that out of the way. And on top of that, uh, they have now said that they will cut debt by more than they previously said they would. They will cut costs by more than they previously said they would. And that profits uh, in the mining bits will actually be higher than the market is currently expecting. So it got going a bit quicker and it's now gone a little further. Can we be confident that Glencore has gone far enough, assuming that commodity prices stay low for quite a while yet? Has Glencore done, it, uh, done enough to get its portfolio into shape for that kind of scenario? They would certainly like the market to believe that's the case. One of the key takeaways from today's Investor Day uh, is that this company is still ge generating about $2 billion a year of free cash flow. And on that base, even with um, commodity prices at their current levels, and on that basis, they are, they are completely clear in terms of servicing debt and, re and redemptions and so on for the next three years. You would hope after three years that commodity prices are a little higher uh, than they are today. And I think that was the key message. You know, we, we don't need to come back to the markets. We can see this through. Well, that all sounds fine if commodity prices stay flat, but commodity prices have been falling. What happens to Glencore if they continue to go down? Well, they say there is lots more they can do. They can cut costs further. They can sell more assets. They have, uh, in their own words, a lot of levers to pull. It's also interesting to look, though, at what they can't do. They are still heavily indebted. Um, they do still have to focus all their energies on managing debt. They're not going to be going out there uh, buying other people's assets at the bottom of the cycle. I don't think the company is home and dry yet, but it's certainly in a much better position than it was, say, three months ago. Real change of attitude seems to have paid off. Jonathan, thanks very much.